Hi, I'm John Mango, the warehouse manager for the Jeffrey Miller Catering Company. This video is going to demonstrate the proper setup of the chocolate fountains. Uh, we have two versions of the chocolate fountains. We have a larger version and a smaller version. Uh, the larger version is Chocolate Fountain 1, which is written in silver marker on both the base and the upper section boxes. If you get to a party, the first thing you should do if you have a chocolate fountain is look at the boxes. If you have Chocolate Fountain Base 1 and Chocolate Fountain Top 2, you don't have a matching set and they won't work together. So if that's the case, you need to call to the shop immediately and have them send you the proper top or bottom for whichever you prefer. If you have more than 150 people, you need Fountain 1 because that's the larger of the two. Anything less than that, you're, you can get away with Fountain 2. So, what we have here are the components of the chocolate fountain. This is the chocolate fountain base, which is where the heating element and the power are. And this is the chocolate fountain upper section, which includes the corkscrew elevator, the elevator cover, and all of the different bells that go down the fountain cover. Uh, we also have a seven inch torpedo level and a plastic stabilizer for the top of the elevator to hold it so that it doesn't wobble. So the first thing you're going to do is you take the base out of the case that it comes in. You look it over. Everything seems to be in place. Take your level and put it on the center section. There's a piece that stands upright in the center. You set it on there to see if it's level. And you don't just check across, you check front to back as well. So this way it's level, front to back it is not. Now the bubble goes to the high end, so if the bubble is on the side that's towards the back, that means the back is higher than the front. To fix that, we have different feet on the bottom. We have these rolling wheels or, or levers, I'm sorry, casters on the bottom. And you screw them out to the left if you want to go up and screw them into the right if you want to go down. In this case, I'm going to bring the front one out and I'm going to check level again. And we're closer to level now. And I'll just keep going with this while it's in place and checking it. Now the front to back is level. Left to right is level. So that when I say level, I mean the bubble that's in the middle of the the tool is between the two vertical lines. So the base is now level and you can start to build up from there. The next section to go in is your corkscrew chocolate elevator. The bottom of the corkscrew elevator has a square section there's a square knob in the center of the base for the, for the elevator to sit on. That will allow the elevator to spin and push the chocolate up. The next section will be your elevator shaft cover. Goes right over the top of the corkscrew. Fits right inside the section that we were using to level the machine with. Your plastic stabilizing ring, and it goes inside the top, inside the top. over. Do it this way. Goes over the top of the knob on the chocolate fount, the, the chocolate corkscrew elevator. And then the whole thing goes down and inside the stabilizer until you hear it thump down. That way you know it's back on the knob. Okay? So that's in place. You come over and you start with the largest of the bell rings. And that goes down over the top. And then you build up with each bell ring in succession size to height. So you go to the next biggest to the next biggest. To the next. 
and then you have your top. Now, the top looks like a cone shape that would go from top down, narrow as the top, wide as the bottom, but it doesn't. It's just the opposite. It goes narrowed up. So that it looks like it's sort of like a reverse Christmas tree, a reverse pine tree. And that's the setup for your chocolate family. Again, you can check level on the top, front to back, good there, left to right, good there, and it's ready. So now that you have the chocolate fountain assembled, it's time to make sure that it's ready for operation. You have your dial and you have your, your switch. It says preheat, off, and start. Chef will be responsible for setting the heat dial. You don't have to worry about that. But you will turn the switch to preheat. That way the base gets hot so the chocolate stays melted. Nothing worse than a chocolate fountain with solid chocolate that doesn't run. Once the base is warm enough, you'll switch it from preheat to start. At that point, you'll hear the chocolate fountain elevator, the corkscrew elevator inside the shaft, start spinning. That's what will transfer the chocolate from the base up and out of the top. Now that we have that established, we'll continue on and I'll show you the proper way to break down and clean the chocolate fountain. Okay, so at the end of the event, the chocolate fountain has been used. You see it's nice and chocolatey, covered with nice thick chocolate syrup. Uh, and you are now responsible for breaking it down and cleaning it up. You will receive a chocolate fountain cleanup box, uh, which will include a four inch hotel pan, a china cap, a rubber spatula, a ladle, roll of paper towels, a bottle of dish soap, and a sponge. They come with every chocolate fountain set because there's only one way to clean this properly. So, we have all the equipment here together that you need. The chocolate fountain is turned off. Before you do anything else with the chocolate fountain after it's turned off, unplug it. So I'll go around to the back of the machine here behind the table. It's unplugged. Now, I'm comfortable that I'm not going to burn my hand if I accidentally hit the switch and don't notice it. I'm not going to get my hand stuck in there in case the, the corkscrew elevator is running. Everything should be safe at this point. So now that that's done, you take your rubber spatula and you wipe all of the excess chocolate off of the parts. You just run it down, it'll fall to the next level and it'll fall to the next level, and it'll fall to the next level. You just get as much of it off as you can with the rubber spatula. You want it all down in the base because it's considerably easier to scoop it out with the ladle there than to try and scrape it off and into a bucket. Obviously, I'm moving a little faster than you should. You want to get it as thorough as you can. You get it all off of there. So the majority of the chocolate is back in the base. We've gotten it pretty much off of all of the bells. Now it's just the process of taking the bells out and starting to clean them. The four inch hotel pan is going to have to be filled with hot water so that you can wash the bells off properly. Start with the top bell, submerge it, you have your, your sponge with soap. It's just like doing dishes at home, for those of you who don't have a dishwasher, I have a dishwasher but she's broken at the moment, she doesn't like doing dishes. However, it's a joke gang, anyway, you wash the soap off. You wash the, the chocolate off as best you can. I understand it's not going to be perfect. You want to get it as close to perfect as you can so that it doesn't go back into the box with any chocolate on it so that someone else has to clean the box out later. So you continue from the top down, take the piece off, 
give it a good wipe, get as much of the chocolate off as you can. Again, perfect isn't going to happen, I get that. Keep it in the water. You do this with every bell all the way down. Got some soap left on it, that's fine. Soap isn't going to hurt anything. You take your cap off, your stabilizing ring, that gets washed as well. Now you take your shaft cover off. This is a little more difficult to clean because obviously you can't get your hand down inside of it necessarily. But you do wipe down the outside still. Wipe down the inside as best you can. Keep in mind, chocolate runs through this thing pretty much steadily the entire time. What you can do, you have your spatula still. You wash that off a little bit. Stick your sponge in the top here. And use the spatula to push it along for a little ways. Get your hand down in there, and it should make a difference. You should have it relatively clean. Just take a little bit of water and your sponge and squeeze it in there so that it's thoroughly rinsed out at the bottom end. And then your corkscrew comes right off. You'll have chocolate all over it because that's just what happens with chocolate in a chocolate fountain. It gets everywhere. Same process. You wipe everything down. With this, the corkscrew, it's easy enough. You just hold on to the screw and you spin it all the way around, all the way down the shaft. The farther you go down, the quicker you'll get it cleaned off. Chocolate fountain should be relatively clean with the upper parts and ready to go back in the box. So then we move on to the base. The base has the bulk of your chocolate in it. And what you need to do then is take your Chinese cap and stick it into the container that the chocolate came in from the shop. Take your ladle and you scoop out the majority of the chocolate. You pour it right through the chocolate cap, and that way any broken graham crackers or anything of that nature gets separated out. Your chocolate will run through the chocolate cap and into the container. Once you have that done, the same process you use for your other pieces you'll use for the base. You will not submerge the base of the, the chocolate fountain in water because there is electrics in here, all sorts of electrical gear. There's a motor, there's a heating element. None of that should get wet. You never want to get that stuff wet. So you tilt the remaining chocolate out of the chocolate fountain. And again, you use your spatula to scrape it out. There should not be nearly this much chocolate left Scrape it out. 
Take your sponge, give it a scrub. Take a look. The base is relatively clean. It's not going to be perfectly clean. There's no way for you to get this perfectly clean in an event unless you have a, an entire setup with a sink and spray nozzle and all that fun stuff. You're just not going to do it. So you clean it as best you can to where it's where there's no excess chocolate in there. It can be damp, that's fine. It can be wet, not a problem. And that's it. That's your chocolate fountain cleanup. If at any time you have any questions, you can check with whichever party chef is there. I'm sure they are more than capable of helping you with this process. But that's it. I hope it's helpful.